Welcome back to the second presentation of the spiritual exercises based on the book The Ignatian Adventure by Kevin O'Brien. Each conference will be based on your prayer flowing from the pages indicated. So this second section, <clears throat> excuse me, is based on what you will be praying with from pages 63 to 77. Again, I would advise not to hurry. Um, the second session uh, might be a month or two after you prayed the first section. So, be patient with yourself. <clears throat> a little review. The exercises are based on the life of Ignatius and intended for not a self-perfection. Uh, many people <clears throat> um, want a spirituality so that they feel good about themselves. The main object is to do everything right so that they can pat themselves on the back. And they, what they, this is a funny thing to say, but they don't want a savior. They want an approver. They want a God that approves and pats them on the back. Here's a, a, a little insight. You might not like this, but God neither approves of us or disapproves. That's a, a human way of projecting onto God something that can't be of God. We said last time that God is unconditional love. That's all. And doesn't demand that we uh, are not human. We are perfect when we are perfectly human, graced by God, saved by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So that's the context that we were created, that God cannot keep God's love inside, but love is aggressive and always going and always meeting us where we are. And our problem, and we said it last time, is can I really be where I am? Often when I'm praying, I find myself asking God, why do you keep giving me the old me? Why do you keep giving me me? Why not giving me a new me? One I can live more peacefully with, perhaps. And grace responds, you are the unique creation, live with it. I say, oh. See, we, you know, it's funny, and maybe you'd like me to say something new, or you'd like, we say to people, so what's new, when you say to people? As soon as you find out what's new, you know what, it's old. What's new is what God creates me to be. That's new. And to be aware of that, the ongoing creation of me. So that's a little review uh, bringing us up to this second presentation. <clears throat> As you know, each um, presentation will have a poem or two and some maxims, some spiritual thoughts. You know what I was thinking, perhaps it would be helpful if each of you uh, would have a notebook and you could, just for yourself, which is what Ignatius did in his experiences, the exercises are just a combination of things that he discovered in his own prayer. So you've got to remember that Ignatius was a layman writing a spiritual compendium for lay people or for human beings, ordained, religious, single, whatever religion in, in our classes here at the university we have had, 
Muslim students making the exercises, non-Catholics. We even had an atheist who I just advised, I said, well, just, just consider and don't fight it. Just let it be for you. And he found it quite helpful not to fight it. So if you find yourself fighting it, put your guns away. What we turn to now in the second presentation, based on the Ignatian adventure, is that we are creatures. Whoa, nothing new there, right? What is new is that we weren't just created, but we are being created. And maybe what's new is that in the creation narrative in Genesis, God said, let's create human beings in our image. What is the image of God on the fifth day, the sixth day, all the days? The image of God into which we are created is that God is a creator. So our, God's image of us is God's sharing, God's creative love with us. We are creatures who are being created by relationships with God, with nature, and with each other. And guess what? We have the dignity and the power of being an instrument of God's creating others. Imagine that. Married people take vows that they will help God create each other. That's a vow. In baptism, in the Christian community, in the Catholic Church, we are baptized to be oriented to cooperate with God's creation of others. Not in our image. I don't want to create you in my image. We get in trouble that way. But our, our, we are constantly being created to accept the dignity and the sacramentality of entering into the lives of others as helping God create them. What a wonderful way to live. So we have a God who is creating us constantly, creating us to be unique and not to be conformed to this present generation, as Paul says, but to be new, different, unique, and grateful. Now, one of the things about God is it's really a neat thing. Just try to follow this. In giving a gift, say, somebody gave me this watch band as a gift. It's beaded. It was uh, uh, beaded by uh, an Aboriginal woman in Winnipeg. The people who gave it to me are saying something about themselves. The giver is revealing something about the giver to the receiver. So there's revelation there. What is the giver saying about the giver? Secondly, the giver is saying something about the receiver. What is the giver saying about the receiver? I love you, I know you, I accept you, I want to be with you, all kinds of things. What is the giver saying about the giver? I love you, I know you, I think you like this. I know something that nobody else knows about you and I'm giving you a gift that says that. And the third thing that the giver is saying in giving a gift is something about us, that there is a union, there is a relationship. I want to be personal. I want to be in relationship with you. And it is a very important thing in prayer, reality in prayer, is to receive all three that I have to receive. I want to receive, God, what are you saying about yourself? 
I want to receive that. What are you saying about me? Ah, that's even harder. What are you saying about me? Why can't I be a new me? No, he's saying, I want you to be not the old me, but the recovering me, the newly created old me. And I have to accept that if I'm going to accept the gift. And if I'm going to accept the gift, I have to accept the union that that giver, God, unconditional loving God, is establishing between God and me. All three things. What the giver is saying about the giver, what the giver is saying about the receiver, and what the giver is saying about us. That's worthy of prayer, just to consider that. And it's, it's a very important reality in following Jesus and being in the, this salvific God to ponder that I can't know God. I can hardly know myself. Some ways we are a bigger mystery to ourselves than God is to us. God is simple. We are complex. It's very difficult to know ourselves and to receive ourselves. It's a great praise of God, the giver, to receive the gift and to say yes to it and to say thank you for it. So that's the first maxim today. And the second one flows from that. Responding is relational. Reacting is instinctual. So what's the difference between reacting? Oh, there's a noise. I gotta... It's, we're governed by those instincts, by our senses. Responding is, is that there's something personal being offered me. It's a relationship. So we don't react to God. God, in offering gifts, in offering me to me, in offering you to me, and me to you, invites a very personal acceptance of myself. A relational acceptance. Reacting is less reflective and less relational because it is so self-centered. It's about me. What does that noise means to, mean to me? Responding is, what's being given here? What's being given to me? So we're praying with the exercises in these next weeks centered around uh, something you will find in O'Brien about a thing called the first principle and foundation, the, the very center uh, that, will, that will be everywhere in the exercises. And in a way we've talked about it, but he says, I am a creature being created with gifts, with limitations, limitations that are actually gifts. Oh, that's a hard one. We don't like limitations. And maybe spirituality. And I said in the first presentation that spirituality is living with the tensions that are caused by what we believe, are caused by our theology. And so this God creates us with limitations and accepting those is a praise of God. Living with those limitations is a praise of God. So we are created then in the spirituality of Ignatius to praise God by reverencing. Imagine this to pray and to be grateful for limitations and to reverence them, and to reverence them as gifts, gifts that constantly call me to trust that God. I don't like limitations. 
and I have many and you have many, and we'd, we'd, li we'd like to get rid of some, and sometimes we can. But the basic human limitations we all share. Sometimes I think we are about 98% all the same. And what is unique about us is about 2% personality, history. But basically we're all, we all fear. We all uh, long for, we all experience regret and emptiness. It's an interesting thing. Art, for instance, or athletics, are about the, the beauty is what do you do with the limitations? Uh, a tennis court, a, a racket, a certain size ball. Then they put a net. And then they put sidelines and a baseline, and you have to keep that ball in there. That's artistry to do that. Or to put a ball this big into a hoop this big, and there's a baseline and sidelines and a three second lane. And all the sports have, you know, why, don't, why not just have a, a bigger net, a bigger ball, no fence, no sidelines? It's got to be limitations. It's what do you do with limitations that is art. What's, what does the artist do with the limitations of the medium? The clay, the, the strings, the frets of a guitar. Artistry is what you do with limitations. So the artistry of life, the holy life, the spiritual life, the human life, the personal life, the creating life, is what do I do with my limitations? And, and so we're, it's a foundation, the first principle, it's to accept those limitations and, sorry to say, to reverence them. Oh no, to reverence them, not to hide them, not to pretend they're not there. And to praise God for them, to praise God for limitations. Oh, come on. The spiritual life is to get rid of limitations. No, it's not. It's to pray with them. And not be afraid that others see them. But that they see how you live with your limitations. How you live in a relationship with God. The unconditional lover who gave you those limitations. You don't always like them. No, it's not about liking them. It's about reverencing them. But then the big thing for Ignatius, and you see in your book, the exercises, the adventure, is to serve God, love God, by being so grateful for those limitations that you help God create others through them. Imagine that, that I can have limitations that I wish were not there. They are there and God can do something with them. And I can serve, not God actually, but serve God's people with God, that I am a servant of God's people in Christ. The Christ is serving God's people, loving God's people as a revelation of the unconditional love of God. I enter into that, you enter into that, but we have to be freed from regret and hiding and disappointment. You see, service or generosity, relationships are based on gratitude. To the degree to which I am not grateful, I'm in hiding. I'm in shame, I'm in pretense, I am in distancing, and I don't enter into the dignity into which I was baptized to be a revelation, to be a gift from God. Well, that's a great conversion. And when we're at the beginning of the exercises, there, it's, it's, a, it's a great, um, a conversion. It's not a conversion that starts from outside moving in. It starts 
inside moving out. This is very personal. And, it's, and, and we're never, gonna know, never going to know how we're doing. Remember I said in the first presentation, intimacy can't be standardized. How am I doing? No. The more important thing is, what am I doing? Not how. It's not, it's not a quality thing. It's not a quantity thing. It's am I being real? Am I being uh, grateful? And am I letting God create me? No matter what age I am, there's always a tomorrow for God and God's use of me. And, and maybe one of the ways to pray is to review the, the, the wonderful people who have helped God create me. Parents, siblings, uncles, aunts, grandmas, grandpas, great grandmas and grandpas, neighbors. I have a, I have a whole wonderful, <laughs> We had, a, we had a neighbor next door when I grew up, and he, his name was Eric, and he did not believe in God. Oh, he was a wonderful man. And we would sit on his front steps and talk to him. And he, and he was very influential in us. It was his generosity and kindness. But he would end every sentence, and this is a man that didn't believe in God, every sentence that he would make a declarative sentence, he would say, yep, that's what I believe by God. He, he said everything by God, but he didn't believe in God. We, we, in fact, we called him Eric by God. That was his nickname for us. Eric by God lived next door. Wonderful man. But there's a, there's a lot of Eric's in our lives, men and women, young and old, living and past, who are part of who I am. And I have been part of theirs. I don't know all the time how I have helped create others. I'm not responsible for that. I'm responsible for showing up, for, for being grateful enough to be there. That, that each of us, in a sense, has a little paint can, or maybe it's a big paint can, and we have a brush, a big brush or a little brush, and maybe in that paint can there's a different colors, one color, Maybe I have a lot of paint, maybe a little. What am I to do with that? That's the praise of God. Sure, you can sing hallelujah till you can't talk. But it's what you do with the limited gifts you have. Now, final thing for today. And I'm, I'm encouraging you to, to pray these um, pages, Take your time, watch different people. You'll be encouraged to pray with Mary, who knew her own limitations, her fears and doubts. We all do. One interesting thing, if, if, you, if you follow God's call to Moses and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Amos and Mary and Peter, you know, what's, you know what's in common with all of them? They all had very good excuses. Abraham, Mo Moses stuttered. Isaiah had unclean lips. Jeremiah was too young. Mary was not married. Peter was a sinful man. What's your excuse? Pray with your excuse. Don't be embarrassed by your excuses. No, no, they're good ones. They're real. They make you real. Pray with them. So that's, that's where we are. We're, we're praying the spiritual exercises gently and slowly, reverently and personally, not measuring ourselves. Don't give up on yourself. You will read in those pages, uh, Tyre de Chardin saying, you know, be, be patient with the very slow God. Stay there a while. So we don't measure ourselves. We pray with ourselves. We are the first principle of foundation, the praising, reverence, and serving, and loving. That's going to go all through the exercises. They are 
the very basic principle and foundation of the whole exercises. It's always going to be about being limited and being asked to pray and praise and reverence. And we're always going to have excuses. Don't be embarrassed by them. That's your humanity and mine. The poem That I want thee, only thee, let my heart repeat without end. All desires that distract me day and night are empty, are false and empty to the core. As the night keeps hidden, in its gloom, the petition for light, even thus, in the depth of my unconsciousness, rings the cry, I want thee, only thee. As the storm still seeks its end in peace, when it strikes against peace with all its might, even thus, my rebellion strikes against thy love. And still its cry is, I want thee, only thee. You see, in, in, in everything, we want fullness. We'll see that all during the exercises. We want fullness, we want completion. Everything, in a sense, has, has a gift and has part of that gift is that it can't complete you. Nothing completes you. No, I want completion. You can't have it. That's the longing for God. Even in my physical hunger and my thirst and my wanting to know, I want thee. And I'll, I will occasionally complete myself, not by you, but by something you have given me. And I'll say, this will be my God now. And it doesn't work. And even my rebellion cries out, I want thee. But not right now. But I'll always want thee, and everything I have, I will want you. Your fullness, your unconditional, not approval. Your approval will mean I have to do something else, and something else, and something else, and I'm on a treadmill of pleasing you. No, I'm on a journey of praising you by accepting that I am a human being created and being created by you. <laughs>